Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is JP Singer. I am a full-time video editor and I am here to help you make better videos. So today I'm gonna show you five secrets in Final Cut Pro to help you edit better. I don't wanna waste any of your time, so let's jump in. All right guys, so we're here in Final Cut Pro. This is a project that I did last year, a little short documentary, so don't mind the crazy timeline, but just wanted to pull up some footage that we can work with today. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to extend reverb in Final Cut Pro. There is unfortunately an issue when you try to use reverb on a clip in Final Cut, it's only confined to the clip length. So what do I mean by that? So let's highlight our clip here. I'm gonna Command-5 to bring up our effects panel and I like to use the Cathedral option. So if I drag this onto my clip, and we have this reverb. I'm gonna go up into my inspector here. I'm gonna turn this down because it's gonna be way too much. Let's just do 10. And I'm gonna hit Command-5 to close the effects panel. Let's get rid of our fader handle. Challenge. So it just cuts off abruptly. And typically, if you're gonna be using reverb, you want it to extend out past the clip. That's the whole point of it. So in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to extend this clip length. So we could just extend it like this, but that reverb is then gonna bleed into the next part of the audio. Challenge. And so I wouldn't. Maybe that's not what we want. So in order to extend this clip, we need to turn this into a compound clip. So highlight your clip, right click, and we're gonna go up to new compound clip. You can also hit option G on your keyboard and then it's gonna prompt you. You can make a name here. Let's just call this reverb and you can add it into whatever event you want. Hit okay. Now we have a compound clip here. It looks the same. If we have the reverb applied, it's still going to cut off at the end here. So what we need to do is we need to open this compound clip. Let's zoom out, command minus on keyboard. Let's highlight this and let's just turn off this reverb for now. So in order to extend this again, we could do this, but that's not what we want. So let's add what's called a gap clip. So go to the end of your clip and we're gonna hit option W on the keyboard and it's gonna add this little gray bar here. We can make this as long as we want. We don't really need too much for the reverb here. So that's about good. So let's go back to our main timeline by hitting this arrow up here. You can also hit command left bracket. Now we're back to the main timeline. And now when we extend this, you can see that we just have that blank clip that we added. So the audio is still cutting off, but now we have an extended clip where the reverb can extend out past what the original clip was. So let's highlight our clip here, Command-5 to bring up our effects panel, and let's just double click on Cathedral here, which will add it to our clip, and let's go up into the inspector and turn this down maybe to 18. Now let's listen. Without this struggle, without this challenge. Now we have that nice reverb that rolls out instead of getting cut off like we did before. And at this point we could add our B-roll on top, we could cut to whatever else, and with our audio, we're just gonna have that reverb going in the background no matter what. Now if you wanted to clean up this uh, clip at all and not have this little black part here, you can drop your audio by hitting um, Control S on your keyboard. That's gonna drop our audio to be separate. And you can just go to where your clip ends. Looks like it's right about there. And just drag your video part over. So now we have the audio extending and we have the original video clip that we had before. This also works really well with music if you want to end a song that doesn't have like a great ending, maybe it just ends on a downbeat. Let's see. So maybe I just wanted to end on this beat here. So let's cut this off. And in this case, I would normally just cut this segment out, duplicate it. And then again, we're gonna turn this into a compound clip, open that up, add our gap clip, go back, extend this out and go to our effects panel, add our cathedral, Let's turn it down. And because it's gonna apply the reverb to this whole entire thing, I will typically kind of fade in here 
the reverb part mixed with the original part so it kind of transitions better. Might need to extend that out a bit. We could even fade that. So now we have this cool little ending to a song that we didn't have before. So that is how you can hack the reverb tool in Final Cut Pro. All right, the next thing I wanna show you is how to make your own isolated images. So nothing makes me more upset when I am searching for like an isolated image on the internet and it ends up having a white background or a black background or whatever it is. So I have this image here of an apple. We're just gonna drag into the timeline here. And let's say maybe I thought that this had an alpha channel or a transparent background and I just want the apple. Well, it didn't. Ah, tartar sauce. And it has this white background. So the options typically for me, I would take this into Photoshop in the past and cut the background out. But now we can use a little workaround in Final Cut Pro using the new magnetic mask tool. So have your clip highlighted here and we're gonna go up to this little magic wand with the drop down menu and we're gonna hit add magnetic mask. Now from here, we have a little eyedropper tool and we just wanna select the areas that we want to isolate. Um, since this is already on a white background and the subject is red, it's gonna do a pretty good job of saying, hey, this is probably what you wanna select here. So this one is pretty easy. You might get some images that are a little bit more tricky, but you can just multi-click in different places. Now see, that gave me something I didn't want. So I'll hit option and remove that. Uh, but if you have a different image, you can just click in multiple places for what you want to select. So since this did a pretty good job, what we're going to do now, typically if you had video footage, you would click analyze and it would track that selection of that mask from the start of the image to the end. But we don't have to do that. All we need to do is hit done. These frames to the left and the right are not going to be uh, masked, but we have this one frame here. So just make sure you're on that frame. And then all you need to do is hit option F on your keyboard and that creates a freeze frame. So now you can see we have a new clip and we can just delete the left and the right. And we have an image now that is transparent. So if we wanted to put this on top of something else, I'm just going to cut that and let's just paste it on top of some footage we have here from <laughs> our documentary. Uh, obviously, this looks crazy, but just to show you the point. Now we have this apple that's isolated and we can move it. And we can make this clip longer, shorter, however we need. Since it's a freeze frame, it's just taking that one frame and essentially just making it into its own image. So you can do this with pretty much any image instead of having to go into Photoshop or any other software to remove backgrounds. You can do it pretty quick in here. It's not always gonna be perfect, but if you need to do something quickly and you don't wanna waste any time, this could be a great option, a great hack to help you out in Final Cut Pro. All right, this next one is super helpful if you have a lot of clips in a row. Maybe it is a sequence, a montage, maybe it's an interview, and you need to do audio crossfades across all of your clips. First and foremost, you should always be doing audio crossfades between your clips because otherwise, if we zoom in, you're just going from one hard cut to the next and you have to just hope and guess if there's gonna be a pop or a discrepancy in the volume that's going to come across in your speakers. So without it, the more and more, you can see we kind of have this very hard cutoff here. So what we need to do, there's a couple different ways to do this. Maybe traditionally you've done a crossfade, Command T. Well, wow, that's also fading the, the more in the video. So we don't want that. Or maybe you drop the audio with control S, control S, and you drag one side out, you drag another side out, and you put these little fader handles into each other. And now you have a cross. The more and more much smoother. But what if you had to do that with multiple, multiple, multiple clips. There is a better way to do it. Highlight all of the clips that we want to put an audio crossfade on, and we can just go to our keyboard and hit option T. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but if we zoom in here, you can see that there's fades applied here. Now we can also highlight these and hit control S to see this better. 
and you can see exactly what it's done. It's done it on that clip and whoop, let's zoom out more. Control S. And you can see it's applied it to this clip as well. Now from here, you can make individual adjustments if you need to put something up further. You can change the fader handle type by hovering over, right clicking, changing to one of these options here. I'm gonna leave it to S curve. That's the one that I like the best. And you can also drag this if you wanna make it shorter. Now there is a default that it will apply when you do this for the length of the fade. And in order to change this, you can go up to Final Cut Pro in your menu here, go to settings, and you wanna go to crossfade option. Um, it's not the audio fade, it's actually the crossfade. So let's just change this just to show you, for example, to eight seconds. Highlight these, option T, and if we hit Control S again, you can see it's made a massive crossfade now, or massive audio fade across these clips. So by default, I like to leave mine at a pretty uh, short amount. So we have it at the 0 0.1 seconds. I kind of just leave that as it is, and I adjust as needed if I need to change something. I do recommend going through and still checking on these just because you know it's just going to crossfade these by the default length and maybe you have something from the previous clip that bled over. But this is much faster and easier to apply to all your clips and then go through and just make sure nothing crazy happened versus going through each clip one by one and then doing the crossfades manually. Nobody wants to do that. All right, next up is a workaround for text-based editing. I use DaVinci Resolve a lot and they have a feature called text-based editing, which is where essentially you can create subtitles or captions for whatever video that you're using and then highlight selected parts of the text to use and drop in your timeline for your edit. Now this workaround is not quite the same. Well, it's definitely not the same, but it could help you out a ton if you have a long interview and you need to find the best parts of the clip to use, but you don't wanna sit there and watch through the whole interview. So I have an interview clip here, and what we can do first is we're just gonna highlight it. We're gonna go up to our little magic wand here in the drop-down menu, and we're going to hit transcribe to captions. Now I recommend doing this on a separate timeline just to keep things nice and clean, but obviously you could use it on your main timeline that you're editing for as well. Uh, what we can see is it went through it pretty fast and it put these subtitles up here. Now you could sit here and scroll through and see, you know, what he's saying and just read it like this, but you could also come over into your index here. So if this is not tabbed on, uh, you can just click this here and we're going to go over to the captions option. And if we drag this out, now we can see word by word what is being said. And maybe we know that there was a certain keyword or a certain topic that was talked about. Okay, so he makes a, a funny reference about a squirrel, but I don't know where exactly it is in the interview. So I go through, I make these transcriptions, I go over to my caption and then I just type in squirrel. And as you can see, it brings it up here. As my grandpa says, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. So if we click that, our playhead is gonna to jump to where that is in the caption. And now if we just wanted to use this portion in our timeline, we could cut this and then we can copy and paste. But another easy way to do that without having to cut is hit R on your keyboard. And this is gonna bring up your range selection. Now we have this range uh, selected here. We can do the same thing. We can hit Command C for copy. And if we go back to our main timeline here, let's just oop, hit A to go back to our <laughs> selection tool. I'm just gonna create a little cut here. And if we paste, now we have that clip from the previous timeline pasted in our new timeline. Uh, as my grandpa says, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. <laughs> so now if we go back to our timeline, we still have the unaffected clip and we were able to find the part we were looking for, copy and paste it and 
we are on our way. All right, the last thing I wanna show you is some quick ways to adjust your volume. It is very cumbersome to come in here and pull this up and down or to add a keyframe by hitting option and making little marks and then dragging this down. So the better way to do it is to use the range selection tool. So maybe this specific audio part here, I want to be quieter. So let's hit R on our keyboard and you can go ahead and highlight this and you can either drag this down like this and as you can see, it's created those keyframes for us. Or an easier way is to go on your keyboard and just hit the minus sign or the plus sign, and you can adjust these by one decibel increments. Now, maybe I just wanna make this part completely silent or quiet. If you hit Shift Q on your keyboard, it's going to completely drop this down to negative infinity decibels, essentially meaning it has no volume. So stop manually going through and adjusting the, the volume like this or up in your inspector here. If you have a part, just hit R on your keyboard, select it, and then hold in that minus key to drop it down. Hit Shift Q to make it quiet, or you can just drag it back up to whatever you need. Much simpler, much faster, and will save you a lot of time in Final Cut Pro. All right, guys, that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something, these little tricks, tips, secrets, hacks, whatever you wanna call them inside of Final Cut Pro. They definitely help me a ton as I'm editing through videos. I'm pretty new here to YouTube, so leave me some feedback in the comments. Let me know what other types of content you would love to see here on the channel. And until next time, keep creating, and I will see you guys soon.